Good morning, everyone. We're so happy that everybody can join us this morning. We pray that y'all are all blessed and having a good morning. We're going to open up in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come before you, Lord. I just want to thank you for your presence this morning. We believe, Lord, that your word is able to reach those, Lord, in every area of their life. And so we're believing for that this morning, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory that you're so worthy of. In the name of Jesus. Good morning, church family. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for that. All those good mornings. <laughs> I heard you through the through the wing, through the through the airspace. Um, I miss you guys. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm, I'm anxiously waiting for, for my hugs and and my good wishes for my sisters. And uh, we've been talking to a few of y'all this week, so. Yes. It's been nice to communicate, and I hope y'all are all staying well. Amen. It's time to do tithes and offerings, and we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. 6, 7, and 8. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, uh, now is not the time to stop giving. You know, sometimes in a time of, of you know, lack, and time of lack, or a time um, that we're going through now, you know, sometimes the first thing we think of, you know, where people are losing their jobs and, and you know, things are, are just going crazy and people are running scared. And it's not a time to be afraid. Yeah. You know, if you're a child of God, God lives in you. And he's always going to provide for you. Amen? Amen. And so we need to not be running afraid. And, and instead of continuing to give, start hoarding, or, you know, just keeping everything, not wanting to let anything go, it's not a time to do that. It's a time to give. Yes. Because as the word says, if we give, and, you know, he is able. Amen. And he's going to be our provider. And, you know, don't depend so much on your paycheck. You know, depend on the Lord. Because if we, we, um, if we could quit, quit <laughs> I'll get my words up. If we quit giving in this time, then we're showing the Lord that, that we're trusted more in, in, from our jobs and from our paychecks rather than um, our provider, yeah. which is God. Amen? Amen. He's our provider. So stand and stand in faith and, and you know, just let the peace of God run through you. Look to Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen? Don't fear. Just, just look to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And um, don't get too comfortable sitting at home watching us online. You know, just keep filling yourself up and one day real soon we're going to be together again. Amen. Amen? And so... Um, because when we come together, there's, there's just a difference. When we come together to worship the Lord, to be in His presence, you know, you want to feel the tangible presence of the Lord, be in a church service where the Bible is being taught, where the music is, we're praising the Lord and we're focusing on Him. Um, just don't get too comfortable. Come and be with us. And if if you're far away from us, you know, find you a good Bible teaching um, church and, and come into the presence of the Lord as a, as a corporate, corporate church. Amen? Amen. So let's uh, pray for our tithes and offerings. You, <coughs> excuse me. You can give on bclawcard.com. If you go into our website, there's a menu there. You can hit the menu. Take There'll be a drop-down um, 
they're scared, you go to give, and it'll take you directly to a page where you can enter uh, your bank card or credit card on there and give your tithe that way. And you will receive, the, put your email and you'll receive a, a receipt. Amen? Or also you can uh, send it through the mail. Some people are doing that. And it's P.O. Box 1399. Vision Church, P.O. Box 1399. Lockhart, Texas 78644. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Father. We thank you, Lord, that um, if we are truly have given our lives to you, accepted you, Lord, and that you live in us, Father, that we have that peace that surpasses all understanding living in us. And in times like these, Father, that we can stand strong and we can um, go forward without fear and without just trusting in you, Lord. And your word says that you were, you were well able to provide for us, for, to supply us with every need that we have, Father. And that you would even give us extra to give into every good work. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters, for their jobs, Lord, that um, they would not depend so much on that, Father, but that they would look to you. Yes. You're our provider. You know, our... We might not be working right now, some of us, when we're not sure who all is working and not working. But, Father, I know that you're going to provide for us. Because our church body has all um, been givers, Father. Father, and they love you, and, and, and they look to you for every need. But if there's someone out there that doesn't know you, Father, that today would be the day that they would look to you, Father, and they would receive you, Father, as their Lord and Savior, Father, and that they too will feel this peace that we have living in us, Father, when times are hard, Father. It's not a time to hoard or, or, or to stock up on stuff that we probably won't even use or need, but that we would stock up on your word in our lives, Father. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for all the gifts that are being sent, tithes and offerings. And, Father, I just pray that they would multiply and they be used for your kingdom glory, Father. And that my brothers and sisters would be blessed, Father, that they would not have any need, Father. Because you're, you're, you're going to provide for us, Father. Yes. You're well able to provide for us, Father. We thank you, Lord. And we trust you, Lord. And we bless you with our offerings. We honor you this day, Father, with our tithes and offerings. Yes. And I pray for for my brothers and sisters, businesses. There's businesses that are struggling, Father. Yes. Father, I pray that you would just encourage them, Father, that you would send customers or uh, clients or whatever their need is, Father. They would, you would send those to them, Father. Father, I thank you that I pray that my brothers and sisters are able to work from their homes, Father, and that they're, they're keeping their jobs, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're with each and every one of them, Father. <coughs> your provision is going to just overpower them, Father, and they will come back yes. and testify to the goodness that you have given, the goodness that you have given them. Your faithfulness, faithfulness Father. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. Protect those, Father, that, that don't know you yet, Father. But, are, but their, their heart strings are being touched, God. Yes. And we give you thanks and glory for all these things, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
in English, is studying lessons from David, uh, the heart, and the Spanish is doing the hardness of the heart. So join us on Wednesdays at 7 for those. And I'm sure that God will, you know, God is so good. We need sometimes to just continue to feed ourselves. As Pastor Sally was saying earlier, don't get comfortable. Continue to, to read the word and to study it. And this is a good time on Wednesdays. And then we're going to believe that for Easter, we're going to be all together and join, as the uh, president was saying. We're going to believe that with him and hopefully we'll be together. And as far as we know, we'll continue that with our plans. Unless something's changed, we will let you know. And I just want to thank you once again for joining us and, and that you continue to stay tuned for the word that's going to be given from Pastor Kyle coming up. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, first of all, we're not, as you can see, we're not having worship this morning, but, you know, we, we were concerned with copyright issues from Facebook and, and YouTube. Um, so we didn't want to, we didn't want to risk, you know, that. But I want to encourage you, you know, God inhabits the praises of his people. And even though we're not having worship here, you know, live, uh, I want to encourage you after, you know, this teaching, maybe you guys have already done it, and that's great, but after this teaching, you know, if you can get your family together and put on some worship music and, and worship the Lord together, um, I think that would just be awesome. And I think that would really, really uh, bless the Lord and bless you as well. Amen? Amen. So, <clears throat> as Sister Sandra said, you know, and this is what's in my heart this morning, is now is not the time to draw back to perdition, my brothers and sisters. Now is not the time to take it easy. Now is the time to push forward. Amen? Amen? The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Yes. So I want to encourage you. I know things are changing in this world, and I know, look, some of y'all, I'm sure, are being hit financially by this thing. Um, and maybe some of you have loved ones that are, um, you know, that have tested positive for, for COVID-19, or, you know, I don't, I don't know what the situation may be. Everybody is in a different place. But I want you to know that God is still on the throne and that his word is still true. And I want you to know that this too shall pass in Jesus' name. And I want you to hold on and I want you to walk by faith like God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, if God can provide uh, <clears throat> meat from the birds in the, in the wilderness for the Israelites, if God can provide manna for the Israelites in the wilderness, I believe that God can provide for you in this season. So if you're being hit hard financially, I want to encourage you to hold on to the promises of God and trust God and be, uh, be directed by Him. His Holy Spirit will direct you in this time if you're being hit hard financially. Amen? Amen. So I want you to hold on. This thing's not going to last forever, and, uh, but our God is on the throne. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, let's go ahead and pray. We'll only first of all say I'm Pastor Kyle. I'm the English and Associate Pastor here at Vision Church of Lockhart. Um, I know Pastor Sally and Sandra already welcomed you, but I just want to welcome you. Uh, thank you guys for joining us this morning. And let's pray and get into the Word. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your holiness, God. We thank you that your love is here and your love is there wherever people are watching. And Father God, we just choose this morning to take a hold. We choose to reach out and to grab a hold of your promises, Father. We choose to reach out in faith, God. We choose to exert our faith in Jesus' name and receive all that you have for us this morning. Because your word tells us in Hebrews that the word, unless it is mixed with faith, it produces nothing. And so we want to mix faith with your word this morning, God, that it may be productive in our life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, God. Amen. 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 Okay, so the title of today's message is The Measure of Love. The Measure of Love. And I want to take us over here to Psalm 27 and verse 13. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 27, 13. If 
find it here in my Bible. Mm. And I want to give you some encouragement this morning. Praise the Lord. Give you something to hold on to. Um, some people are having a really easy time, you know, during this uh, quarantine. And uh, some people are, are taking it really hard and are being affected more than others. And so we want to, you know, my, for my brothers and sisters out there who are having a great time and taking it easy and aren't really being affected by this thing, um, I want to encourage you to stand in faith with your brothers and sisters that are being affected. You know, whether it be financially or physically or in some other aspect. So we're the body of Christ. Amen. So let's love one another. Let's care for one another. And let's believe with one another. So here in Psalm 27, verse 13, it says here, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Notice how he emphasizes to wait there on the Lord. And that doesn't just mean, we'll talk about this more later, but that doesn't just mean, you know, just twiddle your thumbs and just, oh Lord, I'm just waiting on you. You're sovereign, God, whenever you want to move. No. You, <laughs> let me think of how to say this. God has given you the spirit of faith, the measure of faith. Amen. Don't just be sitting there twiddling your thumbs at home. Now is the time to exercise your faith. Amen? Amen? Be of good courage. But going back to verse 13, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord when? In the land of the living. Yeah. Not in the sweet by and by, in the land of the living. Amen? Amen? And listen, for those of you who are more affected right now by what's going on, I know it's hard to imagine the goodness of God. Um, with everything that's going on and you know we're, we're being plagued by a lot of bad stuff in the news I'm sure uh, to be honest I really haven't paid much attention to the news and I've done that purposefully because I've been trying to really guard my heart um, but you know I know that there's a lot of negative stuff going on out there and, um, and it's real you know it's not it's not pretend it's not make believe I mean there's there's real hard stuff to face out there in this life. And whether it be, even if COVID-19 never came, there'd still be really hard stuff to face out there in this world. And it's because this world is evil and there's a lot of <clears throat> fighting and quarreling. And, you know, um, I, I know there's, especially in probably in political parties right now, a lot of people are, you know, really blaming Trump and hating Trump for everything that's going on. And there's a lot of fighting there and there's a lot of sickness in the world. Um, there's a lot of death in the world, a lot of, you know, murder and greed and jealousy. And there's just a lot of evil in the world, but you can focus on that or you can keep your eyes. You can set your heart on the goodness of God. Yeah. Amen. With everything that is going around, because here's the thing is that the evil that we see in this present world it is. It does not reflect the character of God. Amen. God has nothing to do with the evil in this world. Going back to Adam and Eve, they made that decision to follow Satan's deception. And when you see the evil in the world, it's not because God, you know, did it or even you know wanted to allow it to happen for some mysterious purpose. Um, the, the reason is simply this, that people have not followed the truth of God. And that's why we see the evil that we see in the world today. Right. Amen. So yeah. I know some people, their, their view of God is skewed uh, by what they see in this world. But I want to encourage you, that's, that's not faith. Amen. Yeah. The character of God cannot be discerned by what we see in this present world around us. And this is whether it was, like I said, COVID-19 was present or not present. Amen? The, good, the God is good, and that does not change. Praise the Lord. And um, how many of you are thankful that we will see the goodness of God here and now? Amen. Amen. But you got to be believing. Praise the Lord. That's why in verse 13 it says, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord right here, right now, in the land of the living. 
I don't know about you, but I believe, I have seen, I am seeing, and I will continue to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes. Now, I don't always feel uh, overwhelmed with the goodness of God. Sometimes, you know, we go through trials and we go through tests. And uh, we're in that, that valley of the shadow of death. And, and, you know, God's love is not always something that you can feel. Amen? The goodness of God is not always something that's tangible to you 24-7. Uh, there's sometimes where you feel, you know, the heartache of this world. And there's times when you feel the struggle and you feel the pain and you feel the suffering. But I want to encourage you. Believe. It's in those times, it's imperative. Christians, my brothers and sisters, be believing. Be in faith. Stir yourself up. God is still on the throne. And even though you may not be experiencing a time of, you know, blessing or abundance right now, I want to encourage you to believe. And that will strengthen your heart that you will. See the goodness of the Lord Amen. right here, right now, in the land of the living. Amen. You don't have to wait for the sweet by and by. I want to thank God for that. But I want to see the goodness of God right here, right now. Amen? Amen. So if you're going through a difficult time, I want to encourage you to hold on. Because if you will exert your faith, I, I'll tell you, things, things are working behind the scenes. There are spiritual forces at work right now as we speak. Evil versus good. And I want to encourage you to use the faith that God has given you, amen, to just establish the will of God in your life and on this earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen? amen. If you're not seeing the goodness of God right now in your life, you just have to believe until you do see it. Amen? amen. But I want to ask you this. You said, I would have lost heart, <laughs> excuse me, unless I had believed. That I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I want to ask you, what is your heart set on? This morning, this last week, this, this coming week as it's going to be. Because I want to encourage you, don't be moved. You know, things may get worse this next week. I don't know. Things may get better. But the heart that is established in faith is not moved. Whether things in the world get better or get worse. Because our God is the same. And that's what's going to establish that firm foundation for you. But I want to ask you again, what is your heart set upon? Is your heart set upon the evil in this world? Are you being overwhelmed with the cares of this life? Are you being overwhelmed with the burdens that this life can offer you? Or are you focusing, are you, is your heart set on the goodness of God? Yes. Amen? Amen? Are you keeping your eyes, eyes set upon the Lord? You know, um, what is that verse? I think it's in Psalms where it says, I, I, I lift my eyes up to the hills. That's where my help comes from. He says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I want to encourage you. Lift your eyes up to the hills. Look at the Lord. Lift them up in faith. I know it takes faith. It takes faith to lift your eyes, your spiritual eyes, to open them up, you know, beyond this physical world, beyond what you're feeling, beyond what you're seeing, beyond what you're hearing. And to say, Lord, what are you saying? Amen? Amen. God, what's, what's, what's going on behind the scenes, spiritually speaking? Praise the Lord. That's what God is calling us to do, is to set our eyes upon him and his goodness. Praise God and wait for him. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, If then you were raised with Christ, he says, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. You got to set your mind. You got to do this purposely. You can't just lollygag around as a Christian and just, you know, be fleshly and be carnal. And just expect God to take care of everything. You have to set your mind purposely on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen? It's like, um, you know, I forget all the exact details of this, but 
uh, back in the day of Moses when the Israelites were, were being killed by the thousands because of all these uh, venomous snakes that were going around biting people and killing them almost instantly, as I, as I understand it. And uh, in order to save the whole, the, the Israelites from being completely wiped out from these venomous snakes, um, they, they had to erect a, I don't even know what you call it, some kind of a pole, I guess, right? With a snake wrapped around it. And um, it was something symbolic. And, and so God told Moses to do this to save the rest of the Israelites because the Israelites had sinned and they were being punished for their sin. And, um, and so any Israelite who looked upon that snake wrapped around the pool uh, would, be, uh, would be saved. They would be saved. And so what God is calling us to do is that in the midst of all these poisonous snakes around us and all the calamity and everything that's going on around us and the tragedy, God is calling us to look upon his son, Jesus Christ, because that snake on the pool is a type of, of Christ who was to come. And uh, we see that many times in the Old Testament. And God's calling us to look upon His Son, Jesus Christ, for salvation. Amen. Amen? Man, if you, if you set your mind on things on the earth, you are going to get depressed very quickly. You're going to get discouraged very quickly. You're going to grow weak and grow faint very quickly. Your faith is going to be demolished very quickly. Amen? Amen. You have got to set your mind on things above. And I know some of you might be saying, well, that's easy for you to say, Pastor. You don't know what's going on in my life. Listen, worse things have happened to people in the Bible. People in the Bible have been in worse situations than you've been in. I can guarantee you that. And God has come through every single time. You have to make up your mind, you know, are you going to make excuses for yourself and feel sorry for yourself and stay in doubt and stay in fear and stay in unbelief? Or are you going to rise up? The Bible, if you're, if you're feeling discouraged, the Bible says in Romans 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to help you remember who you are. You are a child of God. You have promises to stand upon. God is good, and he wants you to taste and see that he is good. Amen. But you're going to have to believe that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Amen? Amen? So you need to start taking this word and putting it in you. Amen? Just as Sister uh, Sandra and Pastor Sally were saying, now's not the time to get comfortable. Praise God. Now's the time to push forward. Because God is the same. He wants to establish His will on earth. And uh, He wants to do it through you. Amen? Okay, let's go over here to 2 Corinthians 4.16. 2 Corinthians 4.16. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. So when your heart, as we see there in Colossians and, um, and 2 Corinthians there, when your heart is set on the right thing, on things above, on things that are eternal, things that are not going away, your belief will be in the right thing. Praise God. Yes. So is your belief more in, if you're believing more in the destruction that's going on around us, that means that you've been setting your heart and your mind more on things on the earth than you are on things in heaven. Amen? On things above. So, but if our heart is set on things above, that's where our belief is going to be at. Praise God. So, the reason that we believe that God is good in the midst of all this is because we're setting our mind on Him. We're thinking about Him. We're thinking about His kingdom, His promises, His love, His goodness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Where is your mind and heart at? If you're doubting the goodness of God in these times, and you're wondering, God, where are you? I guarantee you, I know for a fact, that you have been setting your mind on things on the earth rather than things above. Yes. 
Because if you set your mind on things above, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, would begin to speak to you and guide you into all truth. And he would, he would equip you to handle what is going on in this earth. Amen. God has always used his people to change events and change the earth. God, and, and God is doing the same thing today. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, I love this. I love this right here. <laughs> the afflictions of this earth. They come and they go. But listen, Psalm 136, it says this 26 times, the mercy of the Lord endures forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you've got to make your mind up. You've got to set your mind purposefully. Are you going to be focused on the afflictions that are temporary, that come and go? And don't get me wrong, the afflictions are real, and they hurt. Don't, don't get me wrong in that, but... You focusing on them and, you know, just what you're doing when you focus on them is you're feeding energy into that. You're, you're feeding energy into it instead of being a person, a man, a woman of faith and, and, and taking control and taking authority just like Jesus did. When the wind and the waves rose up uh, to destroy, Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and he told them to calm. Amen? Amen. So... God is calling us to focus instead on his mercy and his love that endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Afflictions. Listen to this. Affliction should never, ever move our belief in God's goodness. Amen. If, if, if you lose sight of God's goodness, the affliction, the affliction, whatever it is, has beaten you. It's beaten you. And if you have gotten to that place, you can repent and get back into faith. It's, it's, it's as simple as setting your mind on the Lord. Setting your mind on things above. That's what brings faith in your heart. Amen? And that's what God is calling us to do. Do not allow afflictions to overshadow or blind you to the goodness of God. Set your mind on things above. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, I love this. When we talk about believing that we'll see the goodness of God, I, I love this. Our, our belief is not in some, some mythical goodness up there, you know, but I believe that we will see it here. In other words, I believe that faith is powerful and faith works. Amen? It's not just, oh, God is good up there. You know, but here we are down here, full of all this suffering. You know, I believe, when you believe in the goodness of God up there, your faith brings the goodness of God down here. It's only a matter of time, and that's why the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Amen? It's not through faith that you inherit the promises of God. It's through faith and patience that you inherit the promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, listen, this belief is worth nothing. If it doesn't produce anything. Belief is worth nothing if it doesn't produce anything. What's the point of believing something if it's not going to change anything? But that's the beauty of the belief that we have in God's word. The faith that comes from God's word is that it does make an impact. It does affect change in people's lives. And we see that time and time and time again how Jesus would heal people and he said... Your faith has made you whole. Amen? In Hebrews 11, we see that the world that we see around us was created by the spirit of faith. Praise the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God spoke, and so it was. Brothers and sisters, that was faith. That was faith. God imagined and created the world that we see today using wisdom. Wisdom was with him in the beginning to establish the foundations of the earth. I want to encourage you to tap into the wisdom of God. What can you believe for? What can you create in your life through faith like God created the world? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Matthew 6 and verse 9. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 9. 
And uh, Jesus is talking here. He says, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I want us to focus on verse uh, 10. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me tell you, in heaven, is there any sickness? In heaven, is there any poverty? <laughs> in heaven is, you know, praise God, in heaven, everything is good. Everything is good. And I know in the earth, not everything is good. But listen, God wants to use you as, as you know, his, his feet to walk upon this earth and establish his will in the earth, just like Jesus did. Jesus brought heaven to earth. Amen. God created you with, a, yes, a certain purpose, a certain reason, but all of us have this general purpose of bringing heaven to earth somehow, some way. And you're not going to do that by setting your mind on the things of this earth. You're not going to do that by allowing afflictions to overshadow the goodness of God, the love of God in your life. Faith overcomes. Faith is overcoming, brothers and sisters. We have got to remember that. We are people of faith. Do not despair. Do not lose heart. I know things can be rough and things can get tough. Amen. And if you've stumbled, I want to encourage you. Get right back up. Because the Bible says the righteous may fall seven times, but they get back up again. Amen. Get in faith and believe and trust the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 34 and verse 8. Psalm 34, 8. <clears throat> it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. See, in earlier we were talking about believing that we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we go from belief to actually getting it. Yeah. Amen? And that belief is kind of signifying hope there. Like, I will. I, you know, when you hope in something, you're expecting it in the future. Whereas faith takes hope and makes it a reality now in your life. Thank you, Lord. And so hope is believing that I will see the goodness of God. But faith is saying, I'm going to taste and see that the Lord is good. Because faith is now, as the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 4.18. This is about the path of the just is like a shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Man, I love that. And I want to encourage you in this. When it comes to, you know, just <coughs> taking, excuse me, taking things easy. I want to encourage you with this. Too many Christians are content with just a little bit of brightness in their life. And they stay there in that little bit of brightness. But this says that the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Listen. If your path as a Christian is not getting brighter, now I, I know we go through things, we go through the valley of the shadow of death, there's things that Satan tries to bring upon us and we have to resist and, and submit to God and he will flee, as the Bible says in James, amen? But let me tell you, your path should be getting brighter and brighter. And if it's not, you need to ask yourself, am I content? Did I, somewhere along the way, did I become content with just a little bit of brightness. Did I become content with that? Because your path should be getting brighter and brighter. Amen. Now, if your path gets brighter and brighter, what that means is that there's more light for you than what you're seeing now. And I want to encourage you to push ahead in faith, because that's what righteous people do. They walk by faith. I want you to push ahead and step into a brighter place that God has for you. And, and what I mean by that is you just you follow the Lord. You don't create your own brightness. You know, you don't try to make it appear. Um, there's some Christians that are coming, you know, may take that the wrong way and just try to make things happen. No, you follow the Lord and your path will become brighter and brighter. Yes. 
So when God leads you to extend yourself beyond what you're comfortable doing, do it in faith. Amen. As God directs you, do it in faith. Because that's what faith is. Faith is a response to what God has spoken to you. And if God speaks something to you, that means he's given you the grace to fulfill what he's spoken to you. And faith is saying, God, because you've given me the grace to do this, I am going to do it, knowing that you will provide for me. I trust you every step of the way. Amen. The path of the just gets brighter and brighter. Praise God. So I want to encourage you to keep going, keep plowing, keep pushing, and the Lord is with you. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I love this. This is what Paul said here. He said, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is what we're talking about. Getting the path of just getting brighter and brighter. Keep going to the end. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. I love that in verse 8. Finally. At the end of your life, are you going to be able to say, finally, God? Are you going to look forward to seeing the Lord, knowing that you gave it your all in trusting God and believing God? And following God. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Keep going. Now, <clears throat> I want to briefly go back here to, um, and this is really kind of the main point. I just wanted to give you some encouragement. But you know how I am. I like to teach. Uh, so I want to show you how we can keep going. We've been talking about it going, you know, stir up your faith and believe you'll see the goodness of God. But I want to show you how. Uh, we can step into that and how we can do that. So if we can go back to Psalm 27 and verse 14, Psalm 27 and verse 14, when it says there to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage, when it says there wait, that literally means in the Hebrew, bind together, bind together. Okay, so wait on the Lord. Bind yourself together with the Lord. Bind your heart to the Lord's heart. Amen? Bind your heart to faith. Bind your heart to His promises. Bind your heart to the Lord until, somebody say until, yeah. <laughs> you see His goodness. Yeah. Wait on the Lord. Bind yourself to Him. That's Another way of saying, set your mind, set your heart on him, on things above. Amen? Many things will try to pry you away from the Lord's heart. Many things will try to get your vision off of the Lord. And Satan will make sure <laughs> that those things try to pry you away. And that can be people, that can be jobs, that can be anything. Satan can use anything in this world. To try to pry you away from the Lord. But the decision ultimately is yours. Satan can't force you into anything. Amen? Amen. I want to read this here. <clears throat> in Joel chapter 2. And verse 12. When it comes. Uh, this is I'm not reading here yet. But when it comes to God's goodness and belief. Uh, we've been talking about enduring and persevering through the affliction. Keeping your mind set on him. Listen. Listen. All of that, all of that that I just said is vanity if we do not have an understanding of God's love. Amen. Believing that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, all of that is nothing. It's not going to help you if you do not have an understanding of God's love for you. And so that's what I want to talk about now a little bit here. Here in Joel chapter 2 and verse 12, this is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. 
So God is saying, the way to get right with me is not to do these things on the outside. It's not to start going to church, although going to church is good. Don't get me wrong. But church won't save you. That's right. It's all about your heart. Amen? Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Amen. Now, that, that's from the New Living Translation, by the way. Um, I'm sure they're showing the New King James Version up here, but that's the New Living Translation that I just read. I just like the way that it, that it says it. But I, I, want us, I want to take us here to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. We've been talking a lot about faith and believing. And, and yesterday, you know, we talked about, I'm not yesterday, last, last Sunday, we talked about confidence. Don't cast your confidence away. But I want to bring you over here. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now by faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And I still don't believe I have full understanding of that scripture. Um, to understand how great and how vital love is. Because when you think about faith and all that faith can accomplish and all the good things that faith can do, and yet the Bible says that love is greater than that. Love is greater than faith. And love is greater than hope. And I don't think we understand that unless we understand how vital faith and hope are to our life. But that's why it's so important that we talk about God's love in the midst of all of this. If we can go to 1 John 4, 8. It says, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God doesn't have love. God is love. Now, there in, um, remember in Psalm 27, 14, it says, wait, that, that can be translated bind together, right? Wait on the Lord or bind together, uh, bind your heart together with the Lord. How can you bind yourself to someone that you doubt loves you? Right? How, how can I wait on someone or hope in someone that I doubt is going to come? You know, how can I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living unless I believe that God loves me? Unless I know that he loves me? It is impossible to trust someone without knowing that they love you. And there are... Listen, there are a lot of Christians, and I know this to be true, that they're trying to walk by faith, and they're trying to stay encouraged, and they're trying to be strong through trials and tests, but they find themselves failing a lot. And the reason for that is, is because we do not have a good understanding of the love of God That's right. in our life. Amen. You have to. If you're going to be strong, if you're going to be believing, listen, brothers and sisters, you have to have some kind of revelation of God's love for you. And that revelation just doesn't just happen overnight. It happens by walking with the Lord. When you, you read about it in the Word, and we believe it because that's how faith comes, right from the Word. But it's different when you actually see the love of God in action. It's different when you experience his unfailing love by walking with him. It's different when you go through something and you see the Lord show up for you. Amen? Amen. It's different about reading about God's love than it is when you go to your prayer room. And this has happened to me a few times. And you are just overwhelmed with the love, the love of God. And it's not some physical experience it's spiritual the holy spirit is ministering god's love to you there's nothing like that yeah. amen? amen so we need to know the love of god in john chapter 3 and verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life See, if you're going to believe in Jesus Christ, the first thing that you're going to have to believe 
is that God sent his son because of his love for you. You can't believe that God's going to deliver you unless you know that he loves you. You can't believe that God's going to forgive you unless you know that he loves you. It all starts and ends with the love of God. Everything God has done has been for us. And I know it's hard for some of you to believe that because some of you have had a really rough life. But listen, that's not, that's not the Lord's fault. God didn't cause those things in your life. Right. But he is the God of love and he will deliver you when you turn your heart to him and set your heart on him. Amen. Amen. God is very merciful with us, but everything he's done has been for us. All the animals he created, he did it for us. The plants and the trees and the mountains, he did it for us. Amen? Amen. He sent his son for us. He sent the prophets for his people. He sent his spirit for us. He did everything for us. Everything behind God's decision making and how he does things, it's all, it all comes from his heart of love. His heart of love. And some of you say, well, how can that be? Because in the Old Testament, you know, he would smite people and do things. Well, he did that because of sin. So you have to ask yourself, the flood, for example, the flood of Noah, was that because God is mean and unjust? Or is that because he loved humanity so much that he wanted to save us from killing ourselves? Because the Bible says that back then, the reason why God sent the flood is because it says that evil was in the heart of man continually. All man thought about was evil all the time, nothing good. And yet Noah found grace in the eyes of God. If God had not sent the flood, we would have destroyed ourselves and that would have been the end of the human race. Because that's what sin does. Amen? Sin destroys humans from the inside out. That's why God told Adam and Eve, you know, in the day that you eat that fruit on the tree of, of life and death, that you'll surely die. And, um, and they did. And the thing with sin is that sin doesn't kill you fast. It kills you slowly from the inside out. And that's the horrible thing about it. And that's why God made a way through his son, Jesus Christ, for us to be reconciled. Everything he has ever done has been for us. And it doesn't make sense because God is all powerful. He's almighty. You know, nothing is impossible for him. And yet everything he does is for us. It doesn't make sense. But God's love doesn't make sense. And if you try to attain his love with logic, You'll never find it. Amen? Amen? God's love is just that special and amazing. It's not a human love that can be reasoned with. The reason why we trust him with our life and we cast our cares upon him is because we know that he loves me. The reason why I can cast my cares upon God and give my, my innermost desires, my, my heart to God, my love to God, is because I know that he loves me and he will not abuse me. He will not, you know, misuse me for his uh, mysterious purpose, as some people call it. Amen. God is love and God is light and God is not tricking anybody. God is not deceiving anybody or working behind the scenes, you know, uh, in a sneaky uh, unjust way. God is love and he is light and he sent his son to reveal who he is. And when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus was the perfect representation of the Father. Amen. The Ten Commandments, let me tell you, the Ten Commandments, they're, they're good and they're just, but they are not the perfect representation of the Father. They're not. The Ten Commandments are not Jesus. They are not on the same level as Jesus. Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father. And so when you look at the life of Jesus, that's exactly who God is. God is the God who loves the adulterous woman and calls her out of her sin to be the woman that he has called her to be for him. Amen? Amen? That's the love of God in action. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go over here to 1 John 5, 3. 1 John 5, 3. 
For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. That's the You know why his commandments are not burdensome? Because it's just like Romans 12, you know, 1 and 2. It says, to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, which is your duty. It's nothing special. It's your duty. Amen? And uh, so that's why the commandments of God are not burdensome. It's because I'm not motive, I'm not trying to earn God's, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to earn his, um, his favor. I'm not trying to earn a spot with God by doing his, filling his commandments. What I'm doing is I am motivated by the love of God. Amen? To live better, to be better. Because God's love shows me who I am. Who we, as a human race, were originally meant to be. Going back to Adam and Eve in the garden. Which is to multiply and fill the earth with the glory of God. But somewhere along the way, humans, we forgot who we were. And we started serving this master called sin. Praise the Lord. Thinking that sin can give us something. And then we started destroying one another, tearing one another apart, families being torn apart, you know, businesses falling apart and just different things happening, sickness and disease wreaking havoc on people's lives. It's because that's what sin does to its slaves. That's what sin does. But the love of God will free you from the power of sin and darkness. That's the power of God's love. Amen? So that's why we follow the Lord and obey Him. It's because of His love for us. And going to uh, 1 John 5, 17. It says, All unrighteousness is, is sin. I think I got that wrong. And there is sin not leading to death. Let's go to verse 18. Okay. I got that wrong. So let me go over there. Praise the Lord. 1 John 5, 1 John 4, that's where we're going. 1 John 4, uh, 17. 1 John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love, we love him because he first loved us. So, listen, one of the huge ways that Satan wreaks havoc in people's lives and, and discourages people is through fear. And I'll tell you, this COVID-19, this is this was definitely, you know, cooked up in hell. Because there is so much fear from this thing. And if you're setting your mind on things above and your heart is set on the Lord, you're discerning it as well. I know you are. If you're a carnal Christian, you're not discerning it because you're just paying attention to what's on the earth. And God loves you, but those of you who are keeping your heart set upon the Lord, you know this thing is a spiritual attack on the world. This is not just some, it is a physical virus, but that's not the, all there is to the whole story. This is a spiritual attack on the world. And anytime you sniff fear anywhere, you know Satan is there. That is one of the big things about Satan is he brings fear. And so wherever there is fear, Satan is not far behind. Yeah. Amen. And so there's a lot of fear about this thing. And understandably so. I mean, it's a new thing. And, you know, doctors are trying to figure out what to do just as much as anybody else is. And, um, and praise God, by the way, for the doctors and the nurses and everyone in the medical industry that's doing the best they can to handle this situation. Praise God for them. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of fear in the world today. And as a Christian, God is calling you to be a person of love. Amen? There is no fear in love. Now, obviously, as Christians, we understand the effects and what's going on in the world today and how it's hurting people. And, but you're not going to solve it through fear. It's going to be solved through love and faith. And as President Trump urged us as Christians, we need to be praying. Amen? We need to be rebuking. We need to be taking authority instead of just chilling and taking it easy. Praise God, because the Bible says in Luke, God has given us authority over all the power of the enemy. 
Hallelujah. So that's what we need to be uh, standing upon and believing in. Amen. Love gives life to your faith. Praise God. So that you're walking in a living faith and not a dead faith. But knowing his love, as we see there in 1 John 4, knowing his love affects us in multiple, multiple ways. And I'm not going to be able to, you know, go over this and how his love affects us. You'll just have to read the word and, you know, find a lot of it out for yourself. But I want to summarize it in this, that his love makes us healthy and it makes us whole spiritually, mentally, and physically. And I want to take us over here to Isaiah 53 and verse 4. <clears throat> Isaiah 53 and verse 4. This is talking about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. What he did for us. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Now, when you look up um, <clears throat> the word griefs and sorrows there, literally, that's how they translate. But literally there should be translated sicknesses and pains. So he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. We're going to verse 5 now. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen. So, again, God's love makes us whole and healthy, spiritually, mentally, and physically. The reason, remember, the reason why God gave his son was because he loved the world. And this is what his son came to do. To bear our sicknesses and our pains. That's physical healing. He came... To be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that's our sins, that's our spirit that he paid the price for. The chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. That's your, you know, mentally. Jesus came to make you whole uh, and healthy, spiritually, mentally, and physically. Hallelujah. Now let's go over here to John 14, 26, and we're getting to the end here. John 14, 26. This is Jesus talking. He says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, you, it's translated there as Helper, but you can also translate it as Comforter. And when you look up the Greek for that, it can you know, be translated as the one who consoles you, right? So the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our helper. Now, how, how does the Holy Spirit operate? How does he function? Because the Holy Spirit is not mentioned much in churches today. But he is a vital part of the believer's life. Jesus said, when I leave, the Holy Spirit is going to come and take up residence inside of you. Amen? And he told his disciples, don't do anything until you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. So, uh, this is very important that we recognize the role of the Holy Spirit, but how does he comfort us? How does he help us and minister to us? Well, here in Romans 5, 3 through 5, we find it out. And it says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now, those are all good things, right? But listen. The, most, the greatest thing of all is love. Now, hope does not disappoint. This is why we can believe in God. This is why we can trust God. This is why we can hope in God. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. He was given to you. If you're, if you're a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit is there to help you and comfort you and console you. And He is going to do it by pouring out God's love in your heart. Amen. And some of you are listening to this right now, watching us and saying, man, I can really use a good dose of God's love. All of us can. And I want to encourage you, he, just look down, because he's right there beneath your nose, inside of you. He's right there to minister to you. He's been there the whole time. The reason, you just haven't been looking to him. You've got to look to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Ask him to reveal the love of God to you, and he will in, in increments. Amen? Let's go to 1 John 4, 8. 
Since he who does not love God does not know God, for God is love, right? So we read that earlier. And this is, and I, and I hope I can, you know, say this correctly. But <clears throat> I want us to understand something about God. Because God is love. And I want us to understand what that means, that statement, that God is love. So the power of God is revealed in faith. But listen, and thank God for the power of God. But the nature and will of God is revealed in love. The nature and... See, a lot of people are trying to operate in the power of God without having a revelation of God's character or His will. And let me tell you, if you don't understand God's character and will, you're, you are going to be your faith is going to be castrated. And listen, let's go to Galatians 5, 6. Let's, let, me, let me explain something here. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. So it doesn't matter what you do, right? Your works alone, your works alone by themselves, not going to accomplish a single thing. You can try to do all the good things, give to the poor, do this, do that. Not going to accomplish a single thing. But faith working through love. Faith working through love. In 1 Corinthians 13, you can have faith to move mountains. You can speak in all the languages in the world. You can speak in the language of angels. You can give all your goods to feed the poor. But it's not going to make a difference without love. Faith working through love is what truly makes an impact in this world. Amen? I'm going to make a statement, and this is controversial. But we just read that in the scripture. Some people are so focused on the power of God without understanding the character and, 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 um, and nature and will of God. The power of God is impotent without the will of God. I want you to chew on that a little bit. The power of God is impotent without the will of God. What difference does it make if God can do something, but he will not do it? It doesn't matter if he can do something, but he will not do it. Who cares about the can if the will is not there? Amen. Amen. This is the difference between faith and love. A lot of, again, a lot of Christians are trying to operate by the faith of God. But they don't understand his nature and his will. And that can only be revealed in God's love. You understanding how much God loves you. And how much God loves the world. And how much he gave for the world. So if you want God's power to be as, you know, evident in your life. Man, you have got to get a hold of his love and understand his will and his nature. Amen? Amen? Love is what makes God who he is. Love is the reason why Jesus uh, did everything that he did and the power of God on the earth. Amen. It's love is why God makes the decisions he does, why he heals and forgives and gives peace and gives joy. If you want to strengthen your heart, especially in trying times, turn to him and bind your heart to his love. Only then will your faith be effective and your heart will be strengthened and encouraged and you will see the goodness of the Lord here in the land of the living. Do not forget about God's love for you. Set your mind on him. Amen. Don't allow Satan to deceive you with the afflictions and the trials and the tests making you think that God doesn't love you. God does love you. Amen. Set your mind on him. Bind your heart to his love. And you will see his goodness. Father, I thank you for everyone watching, everyone listening. I pray a special blessing on their life, God. I thank you that all of your blessings are available to us through Christ Jesus. Because we are those who believe as like, like Abraham believed, Father God. And I thank you that as your word says in Galatians that the, the promises of Abraham are available to us, God. We thank you for being our provider, being our healer being our Redeemer, in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. And it's, listen, it's much more than just a prayer. It's about your heart. Remember, you can pray all the prayers you want, but if your heart's not in it, it doesn't matter. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in Romans 10, you, salvation occurs when you believe in the Lord with your heart and confess him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So let's go ahead and pray this together. Say, Father God. Father God. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. I believe that you sent your son. I believe that you sent your son. Because you love me. Because you love me. I put my faith in you. I put my faith in you. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sins. And I choose to follow you from here on out. And I choose to follow you. From I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I give you my everything, God. I give you my everything, God. And I thank you that I am new in Jesus' name. Thank you that I'm new. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. You are born again. You are brand new. Praise God. I want to encourage you. If you need the Holy Spirit's love in your life, he is right there to comfort you. He is right there to minister to you. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will the, will, uh, the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So I want to encourage you. Ask the Father. Even if you're born again, this is a separate experience, being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Ask the Father to fill you with His Holy Spirit. And, you're in, and you may not feel anything, but that's okay. You believe that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life, just like the disciples did in the book of Acts. And um, praise God for that prayer language, just like in the book of Acts. Everyone who has been filled with the Spirit of God has that prayer language. Um, you don't understand it with your mind, but you understand it, you know, but it, it, what it does is it comes from your heart. It comes from your spirit. And that's the Holy Spirit um, praying out the perfect will of God through you. Yes. Uh, praise God. So I want to encourage you to do that, um, you know, there in your, in your own time and be blessed as you do it. Amen. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday night here online at 7 p.m. Um, if you want to be a part of the Spanish Bible study, go to the page Iglesia de Vision de Lockhart, and then you can watch there at 7 p.m. Wednesday as well on the hardness of heart. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.